So in this video, we're going to take a look here at this chapter on the Bible in color, uh, race and ethnicity, and misreading scriptures with the Western eyes. And so I am uh, interacting here with the 2012 uh, edition of this uh, work. And so I'm just going to summarize some of the key points, but I'm also going to take issue or make comments or raise questions about some of the things that the authors are claiming uh, in this book. It's an important chapter uh, when thinking about how we read Scripture and how we uh, want to understand what is being said by the biblical author to their audience, but also as well when we want to make an analogy of that material uh, for our own circumstances and the way in which we want to appropriate Scripture and make applications to uh, people's lives today. So I'll begin here by first of all noticing that the authors uh, of this book, uh, uh, E. Randolph Richards and Brandon uh, O'Brien, uh, prefer the word ethnicity uh, to the term race. Uh, and as they will note, uh, the term race uh, is a category invention of the uh, Enlightenment period. And the reason that race was invented as a term um, was to help categorize animal types. So um, in this regards, humans collectively are, is the human race uh, as opposed to the rape of apes or you know, crocodiles or the ways in that we make differentiations between animals. So um, we tend to use race today, this term race, to make uh, differences amongst people um, uh, as if people belong to different races. We see the term races to refer to different uh, differences uh, between um, people from different parts of the world. But for uh, the authors, that's not really how that, that's not the original use of the word race and it becomes confusing. So they would prefer to use the word uh, ethnicity. So ethnicity then for them uh, specifies differences between people. So uh, people might be from a particular ethnic group and uh, this ethnic group uh, then has some distinguishing characteristics. So, you know, we might think about uh, Jews. We oftentimes talk about Jews as a particular ethnic group, or you might think of people from different countries uh, as being of an ethnicity uh, because they come from that area. Uh, so we might think about uh, people from Pakistan or people from India or people from China. Uh, we might think of them having a certain kind of ethnicity. Of course, we use terms like Caucasians, uh, maybe as an ethnic group. We might use, people might use this as race or Latinos, uh, blacks. So these are phrases that we utilize to help distinguish uh, different people. But you know, the authors rightly know that these can flatten significant differences because you know there can be ethnic differences between Caucasians and ethnic differences between all those that might be grouped as Latinos. Sometimes these terms are coined by others to differentiate people uh, who have differences uh, from those who coined the term. Uh, it may not be terms that they coined for themselves. And uh, so uh, these terms that have some kind of utility or purpose in the way in which we construct society and construct our cultures uh, can be unhelpful. Uh, and so uh, we're still dealing with the larger concept of ethnicity or people who come from a particular ethnic background. Of course, that gets much more difficult as you know, there is intermarriages between people of different ethnic ba backgrounds. And so that begins to blur what you mean by ethnicity. I mean, people might have to talk about uh, they have ancestors of a particular ethnic group, but these ethnic groups now have become uh, merged uh, through procreation. 
So uh, while it is correct that, as the authors make, that value judgments should not be made based on ethnic differences. And by value judgments here, I'm talking about you know, making the claim that one ethnic identity is more inherently valuable or superior to another, uh, which is ridiculous. Uh, we sh should not ignore the role that ethnicity plays in understanding cultures. So uh, a person's ethnicity as such may help us to understand the cultures in which they were raised and the factors that play into the creation of things like art and music and uh, literature. Uh, and so the ethnicity, one's ethnicity can play some kind of role, even as people might want to resist uh, ethnic uh, factors uh, that are attempting to shape, as it were, their identity. Now, you know, I'll raise up this first kind of question about something that they claim here on page 55 about um, Paul. And uh, was Paul saying that all ethnicities um, are of equal value in Romans uh, 3.22? So uh, there on this page, what Paul, what, he, what they're noting here is that sometimes what happens is we show, as it were, what it is that is going on in a text. Now, this really starts on page 55 at the bottom, um, looking at there's no difference between Jews, Jew or Gentiles. Um, and so, you know, Paul is a Jew, and Paul uh, has an understanding of the biblical narrative. Uh, and of Israel being having a covenant relationship with God. So they have a special, unique relationship with God. That doesn't mean that they're inherently more superior because of the color of their skin or because they both, both they are descendants of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Uh, but they do have a certain value uh, because they belong to this ethnic group, this, this family group. Uh, and so it, we're kind of imposing here on Romans 3.22, sometimes our own sensitivity to the question about eth ethnicity when we're making claims that uh, all ethnic groups are the same. You know, for Paul, uh, while he knows that uh, there is in Christ these ethnic differences that become regulated to one's faith or confession of, of Jesus as the Messiah, um, that nevertheless uh, there is a historic uh, understanding of who the covenant people of God are and how one uh, you know, belongs to that covenant people. Now, of course, Paul is resisting as well the concept that one belongs simply because of one's birth, but now it's because of one's faith that one can be identified as the covenant people of God, though, you know, certainly birth did play a, a function or a role in um, people belonging to that covenant people. Uh, so uh, it is true that failure to account for ethnic differences between characters in biblical texts can lead us, or the interpreter of text, to, to miss important details when we're trying to interpret what a biblical author might have been conveying to his audience. Now, of course, you can read text and you can ignore these things if one's trying to create meaning or significance without concern for what the biblical author was trying to convey to the audience. But if you're trying to appreciate what might be hinted at or might have been insinuated, uh, especially when ethnic distinctions are, are drawn upon or highlighted or assumed by the author. Uh, so, you know, for example, they bring these up. This is good uh, about, you know, how did Romans see Jews? All right, so we've got, you know, the fact that, you know, Paul is a, Ro is a Roman citizen. Now, when we turn, use the term Romans, what, what do you mean by that? Well, Paul is Roman, and Paul is also a Jew. So, 
but you, we might think of the term Romans. Let's just think of people who have a, an ethnicity from, you know, on the Italian peninsula or in the city of Rome who may be identified by certain characteristics or certain ethnicity that would distinguish them from people who come from, say, Palestine. And so how do these people see others? Well, I mean, there's a great deal of change that has taken place in how different cultures are viewed and how they view people from different cultures. It's going to be vastly different than how maybe even today people look at others from, from different cultures. But it's a good question. You know, how would a person, you know, who grows up in the city of Rome, whose parents and grandparents, grandparents all have this kind of ethnic identity with this area. How do they look upon people who come from other areas uh, who have become subjugated, as it were, by the Roman power? How are they How are they viewed? Or how did the Israelites see themselves while they were governed by the Persians? Not only how did the Persians see the Israelites, but you know how would the Israelites might have think of themselves in relationship to the Persians? So these are you know, good good questions to raise as one's dealing with texts that are created in these uh, in these cultures. Now, while all cultures have prejudices, I mean, this is just you know known fact. Every every culture uh, has their biases uh, against people from other places. You know, you know we will talk about um, differing facial uh, distinctions, col color of skin, you know, uh, their eyes or, you know, height or, you know, lots of, of these physical features. Um, but the question is, did ancient all cultures have the prejudices based off of skin color? So this is a section that they have um, that they will ar argue about it. They, they use an illustration from about Rebecca and Esau's wife, and what's going on here, uh, the fact that Esau's wives are, are Hittites, and that I mean, maybe here is Rebecca has a prejudice against Esau's wives because of the color of their skin, because they're, they're not of hers. You know, I think this should be tested. I'm not 100% I'm not sure that it's really a skin color issue. I don't know if this is the best illustration. Um, to, to use it. Now, you know, sometimes I do think skin color is a, an interesting issue, um, especially in our prejudices when uh, we want to represent things. Uh, one example that I've oftentimes used is um, when the movie uh, The Greatest Story Ever Told was created, uh, there was, um, you know, bringing in all these famous actors to play in this story about the life of Jesus. Um, a decision was made uh, here in the early 70s uh, after all the race uh, relate, uh, activities, race riots or, you know, conflicts uh, that we had here in the United States to present Simon of Cyrene, in Mark's gospel, who helps Jesus carry his cross, um, with Sidney Poitier. Well, here we have a bl black man uh, representing Simon of Cyrene. Well, Cyrene is in Northern Africa, and, uh, you know, are people from Northern Africa black? <laughs> uh, so, you know, we might not necessarily on the coast there, like we think about Libya, you know, the skin color there may not necessarily be black, but that was a choice because you have this very powerful image with Sidney Poitier, and the white Jesus, like Von Snowden, underneath the cross together in the midst of the kind of racial tensions going on here in the United States. So, you know, skin color assumptions that we make and project, you know, into telling stories may affect the way in which we want to appropriate text and, and utilize them to convey ideas and, and values in our own culture. But we have to be careful because just because we have those issues ourselves does not necessarily mean that the biblical authors did. And so here I'm wondering, really, is this a skin color issue or the fact that, you know, they're Hittites and the Hittites had their gods and who knows about Rebecca's gods may not be sharing with the Hittites. 
And so it could just be an issue of foreignness. I'm not so sure if it's enough for skin color. Just come from, you might actually have the same skin color, but they come from a different geography. There may already be these prejudices. I'm just not sure if prejudice based on skin color was as key for national as it oftentimes is, particularly here in the United States. Uh, did Luke and Paul have a prejudice against Galatians. This is an argument that they make in pages 57 58. And when, when Luke is telling stories about the Galatians, not mentioning people from Galatia, when he recounts people from all over the Roman Empire who were present on the day of Pentecost, he leaves out Galatians. And Paul, using, oh, foolish Galatians, they want to claim is a racial slur. Um, I'm not so sure if Paul does have this prejudice against them. They try to provide some uh, reasons why to suggest that. It's not enough really to convince me that uh, I can you know, confidently claim that this is what they that they have. Uh, I think that there can be other issues that are at play here rather than the prejudice against people from this particular area that Paul shares, some of the other prejudices that people may have of people of that area. So my point here primarily is when reading this, the illustrations that are given are uh, thought provoking, uh, may look like they help the authors make their case, the case is one that should be made, uh, but it may be as well reading into a particular text in order to justify a position. Does Acts 21.38 show that some Romans probably thought Paul looked at Egyptians? Well, uh, again, they bring up some things in which maybe how some Egyptians look. Uh, and could there have been Romans that made it based upon what they might know of some Egyptians? Uh, yeah, but, you know, people from Egypt have a lot. Their Egypt was a place that was very multicultural. It was people from all around the world. Greek and Roman, uh, uh, you know, Jewish background. I mean, there's people from all over. And so I, I don't know that just by seeing the way that Paul looked, um, you know, shaven head, that would make them think, oh, he's Egyptian. So uh, again, are you reading too much into some details in order to try and prove a point that is important? That is, that there are ethnic differences that the authors of these texts in telling these stories may be acknowledging or recognizing or alluding to. Uh, it might be helpful as well to recognize these uh, ethno, what they call ethno-linguistic markers in biblical texts and particularly geography. Um, you know, some places are made, some certain asso associations or assumptions are made. Uh, about places, and they are brought in to the text. So a good illustration uh, is provided about the wife of Moses, who is from Cush, um, which is southern Southern Valley. Uh, now, you know, during the medieval time, when people painted pictures of Moses and with his wife's fora, uh, you know, she's black. Uh, you know, that's be what they would have uh, assumed and seemed to be a, a good assumption. But I'm not so sure what the actual issue is here. Uh, and I think they raise as well that it's, it is a bit unclear what the issue is. Is it because of her gods or, uh, it, you know, they want to consider whether or not maybe Moses is marrying above himself uh, and the, how the Cush, Cushites might have been viewed. So it is unclear exactly how, but you know the fact that she is from Cush represents uh, again a foreignness, uh, a foreignness, and some of the problems that come with how uh, one group of people, the Israelites, uh, may have viewed uh, people who are coming from uh, from Cush. Uh, another illustration here is uh, about Acts six one. I think this is really quite good here to uh, consider. Um, and that is when we find in the Lucan text, Acts 6, 1, just distinguishing that as the church grew, uh, there became this 
dispute between these Hebraic Jews, it might be rendered in English, from the Hellenists. Uh, you know, there's a Greek term that's used, Hellenists. And sometimes it might be rendered Grecian Jews or Hellenist Jews. And so what's the distinction here that's being made? And you note that then that the apostles who are Galileans and they would probably be the Hebraic Jews, meaning um, they can have some association, as it were, uh, with speaking primarily Aramaic, I would think, is the, the concept. They primarily speak Aramaic. Um, or they see somehow or another their relationship to being Semites. Uh, they grow up in, in Palestine to uh, Grecian Jew or Hellenist Jews, and that is Jews who have in their families who have adopted Greek styles. They they're speaking the Greek language. They may be in Greek speaking synagogues. Um, they dress, uh, they take on the customs of the Greeks because the Greeks had, you know, come to dominate the area and, and wanted to economically prosper. One took on Greek uh, culture in order to advance. And so uh, many Jews did. Of course, there was also opposition to those Jews who did because some, some Jews would have thought that those Jews who became more Greek were becoming, you know, less like uh, an Israelite, and so they're they're too cozy, as it were, to the Greeks, and maybe starting to um, uh, not have as so strong of opinions about uh, certain laws and how certain laws are to be observed. So there could have been these tensions between these types of Jews who have adopted different cultures, and so uh, I'm not so sure if an issue of ethnicity uh, in the sense of you know, a Hellenist Jew and a Grecian Jew are still Jewish, and so they still come from the same ethnic group. However, here are differences between these this ethnic group in terms of cultural customs that are are taken and adopted. So it's not really an ethnic differences, uh, but it is Jews who adopt the characteristics of a particular ethnic group. There can also be uh, differences based upon accent. There's an illustration there from Judges 12 and uh, the role that was being played, testing people from the same area and how they could uh, say the, the word Sibboleth. Uh, and if you couldn't say it in the way in which they say it, then they know you're not from there. So We have the same thing here in the United States, people from different areas, uh, how do you actually pronounce uh, you know, a particular city or a particular area, you know people are from that area when they pronounce it the, the way that people from that area pronounce it, as opposed to foreigners who see it you know, written a certain way and think they know how to pronounce it. Or Peter is recognized in Matthew's uh, gospel as uh, you know, being a Galilean because of the way in which his accent. So, you know, sometimes um, there's, a, again, it's not an issue, in this, well, at least in the Peter's case, it's not an issue of ethnicity, uh, but recognizing someone is from a different place. So you are a Jew, but you're a Jew from somewhere else. And so that's a difference, but uh, certainly not a different ethnicity. Galileans are not, uh, you know, Jewish Galileans are not ethnically different from Judean Jews. And there also can be differences based on the size or the history of your city or town. And so, you know, we've got a situation where, you know, Nathaniel's can say, is anything good come from Nazareth? Because Nazareth is a small village, it has nothing really significant uh, about it. Uh, here, the, if some kind of Messiah or some significant figure, prophet of God, is supposed to come from Nazareth. Well, you know, does anything good come from Nazareth? Does a small no, or Babylon as a symbol? So, of course, Babylon is significant in terms of taking the Jews away. But then, you know, after Rome destroyed the temple, then Jewish literature begin to think of Rome as Babylon, uh, and even in New Testament texts, we have Babylon being used in terms of the Revelation. Babylon being used as a, a symbol for Rome because of what Babylon had done. Rome was basically being 
with the same thing. Uh, they make an interesting observation about uh, divisions in Corinth. Uh, partially, they wonder if it's partially due to ethnic differences, and noticing that you know, some are for Apollos. Apollos is a native of Alexandria and in Egypt, you know, where there were people who had come to Corinth who were from Egypt, Alexandria, and they liked Apollo because Apollo was their guy. They were from the same area. Uh, Cephas or Peter is coming from Palestine, where there are Jews from Palestine, because they saw Peter as, you know, one like them. Paul is not from Palestine. Paul is from Asia Minor. Do people from Asia Minor who lived in Corinth, do they see Paul really as their guy? So are there differences based upon where these people are from? Now, again, if since Apollos, uh, Peter, Paul are all Jews, they all share the same ethnic background, but again, because of places where they lived or grew up, uh, they may have adopted the culture of ethnic people in that area. So are these rep being represented again in, in 1 Corinthians? Uh, of course, uh, we have that another good illustration with uh, the designation of Ruth as a Moabite, Considering the kind of the history, the animosity between Moabites and the Israelites uh, in the book of Genesis, calling Ruth a Moabite may be echoing as were some of that uh, tension um, and of their foreignness, and uh, you know bringing all that to bear in telling the story of Ruth and why this is such an amazing story that of a Moabite who wants to uh, identify with her mother-in-law's. Uh, God and mother-in-law's people. Uh, and so there's definitely eth ethnic um, distinctions that are going on in this story. Uh, and so I'm just going to end it here with this comment about uh, something they, they end with a question about uh, Paul and making an ethnic point uh, when he says there's no Gentile, Jew, barbarian, or Scythian in Christ. Well, you know, if you're just wanting to say that for Paul, the author of Colossians, whichever, uh, is saying that um, that ethnic differences in Christ have been regulated, as it were, in terms of access to God, yes, that that's correct. So all ethnicities are of the same uh, in terms of access to God. Now. I don't believe that Paul is saying ethnic differences are now eliminating Christ. In other words, let's, they're, no, we're no longer going to think about people with our ethnic differences. You know, Paul still would recognize ethnic differences. Uh, certainly his debates oftentimes about the difference between Gentiles and Jewish Christians. So some Christians ethnically are Jews. Some Christians ethnically are, you know, are, are from other parts of the, of the world and have a, a heritage, an ancestry that mark them as different from, from people from, uh, from Palestine. Uh, and so I don't think he thought that those differences were eliminated. There's going to continue to be Jewish Christians, there can continue to be non-Jewish Christians uh, or Christians from different ethnicities. And uh, those ethnicities no, still have a role to play in terms of how we self-identify and how we act and how we connect within our communities. Um, but they, these different ethnic differences do not um, uh, do not give one ethnicity a particular advantage over another, save that Israel, whole biblical narrative, um, the descendants of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, uh, have a, um, a special place uh, in how God is going to use them in uh, affecting change in, in the world. Of course, the New Testament message is that, the gospel is that people who are were not born into that uh, family, uh, that lineage, uh, nevertheless become uh, a part of that family and a part of that covenant 
part of that role, that mission in the world, despite the fact that ethnically they, uh, you know, don't come from that, that group. All right, we'll just leave it at that. And so a quick little survey of the, the Bible in color, race and ethnicity in Mystery and Scripture with Wesley.